few weeks ago I was in COVID quarantine and during that time I was looking for some new entertainment to keep me occupied. If you're wondering, yes I am okay. It was fortunately a very mild case. During that time I spent hours on TikTok and YouTube just trying to pass the time. A few days in I start to see this squid game trend pop up in my For You page and I initially didn't think anything of it. I thought, ah, I yes, guess, it's, it's just, just another, another internet, internet trend. trend. Clearly that was incorrect because after my quarantine expired, my page is absolutely bombarded with content from Squid Game. I cave into the curiosity, much like I did with Danganronpa, and decided to look into it. We had these people cutting out a cookie out of a bigger cookie for some reason. <laughs> While watching the show, I noticed that this feels like a distant cousin of Danganronpa. It certainly doesn't have all the elements that make up Danganronpa, but there are similarities and the show differentiates itself from DR to make it appealing. Danganronpa has the wide color palette and all the characters in their talent specific outfits, while in Squid Game we see people wear the same outfits day in and day out, but we also see people locked in place for days at a time, much like Danganronpa. After one episode, I was hooked. Allow me to take you on that journey. Roll credits. The first scene we see, and you've already given me an excuse to make a CinemaSins joke. It's quite clever actually, as we're introduced to an extremely integral part of the plot early on, even if we as the audience have no idea just yet. I'm sure all of us have played games in our childhood, and it's a natural part of our development, so even if we aren't from Korea and don't understand the game at hand, we already establish a connection to the narrator, as it's obvious he's the one playing the game and explaining it as he's much older. Whether you played Tag or Squid Game as a child is irrelevant, we all understand the nature of the games, as they're just that. But as we're soon to find out, games that seem simple on paper can also have vast strategies with them. Um. 이거 뭐야? 나 주는 거야? 네, 네 오늘 가영이 생일인 건 알지? After our narrator wins the game at the age of six, he's now broke, living with his mother as a deadbeat son trying to make any amount of money he can. This is not uncommon for people in Korean society, as we later learn that wealth inequality is another integral part of the plot. I actually looked this up, Korea has one of the worst cases of wealth inequality in the world, with nearly 17% of the population living in poverty. Extreme social competition for jobs and corruption are two major players in the disparity of wealth. From the word go when a Korean child enters school, they are constantly expected to perform well. It's nowhere near the level of how the United States treats its schooling. Korea is much more stringent on academic success, as it is crucial for improving one's socioeconomic position in South Korean society. Students fight tooth and nail to get accepted into the country's top universities, but there are only so many spots for the taking. Comparing this to other universities, the numbers aren't even close. If a student doesn't go to college, it's often very hard for them to get high school jobs. Students want to go to these three universities because all the country's big CEOs went to them. Unfortunately for 99% of these kids, getting rich isn't really a possibility. Not even close. Our guy gets an easy 40k from his mom and then immediately goes to steal her credit card to buy V-Bucks. I, I think. He really wants that Skull Trooper skin. After some hijinks with the pin number, he finally gets his V-Bucks and then immediately starts gambling them on horse racing. Surprise, he loses it. Somehow he scrounges up some money and bets again. This time, he wins. And he acts like he just unboxed a knife in CSGO. <laughs> Our guy wins an easy 4.5 milli, and then uh oh, here comes the loan sharks. Better run, gotta get it, gotta get it. Oh, is forced to acknowledge his massive L in regards to his debt, and then signs his life away. But not long after, he remembers, oh yeah, I have a daughter. 
So he goes to an arcade, fails miserably, and then steals the prize from this kid to give to his daughter. Parent of the year, ladies and gentlemen. Turns out the daughter is part of a divorced family, as she went to a much nicer restaurant with her presumably more well-off parents. Family bonding. Oh yeah, I wonder what he got for her birthday. <laughs> How does no restaurant person question this? After spending time with his daughter, our guy takes her back home and then gets scolded by the mother for being 0.1 seconds late. And then he has to ride the subway all the way back home. But then... He meets this guy. This man will change your life, either for the better or for the worse. We don't know it yet, but there's a 99.7% chance that this man will make your life horrible. You're probably wondering what all these dots are. They represent one person, each with their own dreams, ambitions, and story. For this man to change one life, 455 people will have to end up dying. See that little guy? That's our winner. That's the beauty of Squid Game. It ropes you in with the possibility of winning money, but in reality, you have next to no chance to win. And back to the show. No. So this funny guy ends up convincing our protagonist to play a game. If he wins, he gets an easy 100k. If he loses, he loses 100k. That he doesn't have. But the man agrees to exchange the minus 100k for a slap. And the two just start going at it. <laughs> Finally, he wins, and the men's like, hey, we're gonna do a game in a few days, you should join us. Okay. The next day, gi -hun and his mom learn that his daughter and custodial parents are moving to America, and the mom doesn't like it. She thinks that the daughter is going to magically forget Korean. To be honest, this sounds more like boomer speak than anything, but if your child was moving away with the custodial parents, as the non-custodial parent, you probably wouldn't be too happy about it. Man, oh man, it's 3am. I'm really sad about my daughter. I should call that suspicious number. What's the worst that could happen? Song Ah, uh, yeah. Amon. Why couldn't it just have been like three knocks on the door or something? Surprise, he gets knocked out. But it's only a social experiment, you guys. No need to worry. As gi -hun wakes up, he examines his surroundings to see other people doing the exact same thing he's doing. We see a massive room with seemingly hundreds of beds and other people. As the orchestral music flourishes, we now see a room filled with guards watching over the waking folks every move. And here we see the head guy, the low polygon resolution man. Aw oh, look, ki -hun made a friend. How sweet. <laughs> Best character in the show has appeared, let's go. And in case you guys couldn't tell, I really hate this guy. And then after some three-way fighting... <sighs> Thank you. 
The masked men explain why they brought these people here, and after some questions about the ethics of why and how they did it, the players sign their life away. Yep, this isn't suspicious at all. I'm gonna sign it. The contestants are herded like sheep to the first game, but not before you have to take your picture. As the contestants are led up an unnecessarily long staircase, we enter the first game. Oh look, another friend! Stop! You violated the law! Oh god, oh god, uh, everything is fine, no need to worry, everything is okay, uh, you just need to uh, not, not move, everything is okay, uh, stop moving guys, uh, why are you moving? Okay, but for real, like, if you didn't move, you were fine. I get the initial shock, but like, just don't move. Be like this guy. He's handling it like a champ. We get the characters all trying to make it to the end. Some smooth jazz starts to play. Uh, this guy saves the life of our MC. Thank you. And everyone dies, lol. Oh, by the way, where the hell are we? The masked men come back and are going to explain what the hell just happened. Two hundred and fifty-five people. That's like uh Hold on. That's like killing one percent of Madison Square Garden at full capacity. Rookie numbers. So we get this woman begging for her life, and then like 20 other people start joining in. <laughs> All you ever do is complain. Pause. The gangster voted no. Nice job, man. And everyone gets to go home. Gihun, being the smart and sensible person, decides to go to the police. I mean, who wouldn't? But there's an immediate problem with that. The story he gives is so utterly ridiculous that the police pass it off as someone being mentally ill. What the fucking shit are you down the mark for? Playing your fucking mouth, mate, to my bro, man. You sent me a message first, yeah? I live in Smevic, Birmingham. If you want the fucking brawl, come down, Smevic, ask for Danny G. I'll come out of my house and I'll break your fucking legs, you little prick. Never ever say Never ever fucking say Turns out life sucks for the surviving participants. Sung Woo tries to kill himself because of his debt. I wonder who that could be. Surprise, it's another card. Turns out, everyone gets the card again. And so they all decide to play the game again. And that's episode two, bye! Here we see the meat and potatoes of the Squid Game operations. Lots of cars head towards the port. Mujin port, to be specific. I wonder what their Google reviews say. But a policeman secretly tails them, hoping to infiltrate. Surprise, he makes it in. We learn the hierarchy and the rules that the workers have to follow. So, 
It's seemingly strict, but it's a death game. They can't legitimately risk anything getting out, right? The players are brought into the facility and are awoken. As it turns out, they're given lunch, and oops, it's time for game two. Sugar Honeycomb. I'm certain 99% of us who are watching this outside of South Korea had never heard of this before watching the show or seeing the trend on our TikTok for you page. The rule is simple. Cut out the shape of your cookie without breaking it. That's it. Some idiot broke his cookie. Whee! And some other idiots break their cookie as well. Gihun struggles for about 9 and 3 fourths of the 10 minute time frame, but before that, he gets the incredible idea to lick the cookie, and he wins. And then this guy rebels against his death, and you guys failed, so please accept this friendly gift. I don't know why he kills himself here. You could have tried taking out like two guards before you would have been killed. Whatever. And oops, don't take off your mask, I guess. And that's game two. But just before the game ends, our policeman nabs this mask. This mask is one of a higher rank than he currently is. In case you didn't know, circle equals worker, triangle equals soldier, square equals manager. The more polygons you have, the higher up you are. And this is why the front man has so many polygons on his mask as well. The funny policeman takes this mask, hoping to find out more stuff about the operation. Okay, that's episode 3. Bye. Looks like we got some cheating going on here. Nice. What are you doing? The school bullies take the lunch of others, and this guy gets left out. And then he goes over to the bullies and gets beaten to death. LOL. This causes the entire room to go dead silent and just looking at the corpse. We cut to the policeman putting on the better mask, and then he scolds another guy for talking to him. How dare you have the ignorance to speak to me, idiot. Gihun tries to recruit best girl to his team, but his pleas are ignored. The doctor gets told of the next game. And then there's apparently a special game that's about to go on. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. And then like 30 people beat each other to death. My dick fell off! Both the bullies and the good guys introduce one another to their group. And then these two... Uh... Ah! It's time for the actual third game. Babe and the bully split up. How sad. But she joins Gihun's gang, so it's all good. The first team to play is the gangster and his bullies against a much weaker team. Surprise, the gangsters win. Next is Gihun's team and a much stronger looking team. Not the best start. Before the match, the old man gives some advice on how to win.
They follow it, and thus begins a back and forth battle. The team starts off strong. But then starts to inch closer to the snarling jaws of death. And that's episode four. Not even joking, they just cut it at the most tense part. Hold on, let me do the joke. And then Song Wu had an idea and they won. <laughs> nice going. This man is traumatized by what he just did and starts praying to God. The team is understandably not wanting to really talk to each other given that they all just killed 10 people. But you know, friendly bonding. After game number three, 40 people remain. Can I get some food? No. And the gangster comes over and has to have a friendly chat with Gihun. After some team bonding at night, the doctor trying to perform surgery on dead people, and some other stuff, we get... I hate my life and my job fucking sucks. Bye.
Lots of stuff happens, but I'm not going to explain any of it. The policeman enters the front man's secret room, and surprise, the game has been going on for over 20 years. Congratulations, that's such a good accomplishment. 20 years of success. 20 years of fun! Surprise, here's his... <gasps> Welcome to episode 6. It's already time for game 4, and it's gonna be so much fun. You know, I think they will be a great team. This woman didn't get a teammate in time, so I wonder what will happen to her. We get a few somber shots of the players realizing that they have to face against the partner that they chose, and in most cases, it's probably going to be the person you were close to for the most of the game. Ali and Sung Woo play Guess How Many Marbles I Have. Gi Hoon and the Old Man play Guess How Many Marbles I Have. The Gangster and his funny friend play Guess How Many Marbles I Have. And Se Byuk and her friend play Talk About Life for 25 minutes. We get a back and forth montage between these four groups, so I'll quickly go over the highlights. Sang Woo thinks Ali is cheating even though he has never played this game. Gi Hoon desperately tries to convince the old man to play with him out of the fear that if they do not play, they will die. Ali is then instructed by Sang Woo to try to look for an elderly couple to take their marbles. The gangster is straight up enemies with his quote unquote friend after he takes 19 of the 20 total marbles. They switch the game and the gangster wins. Uh oh, gotta run, gotta run away from the guards. Oh no. Sebyuk and her friend play throw the marble the farthest. Sebyuk wins after the girl. I wouldn't call it rage quitting, but she acquaintance quits. Not gonna lie, some waterworks were shed during this scene. <laughs> oh, and then Sung Woo did something really cool and awesome with Ali's marbles. Real quickly, can we talk about Sung Woo's betrayal? I think most people would jump in the defense of Ali in this situation, labeling Sung Woo as the secret Disney villain, but is what he did wrong? <coughs> I find it hard to believe that if any of us were put in this situation, you'd happily say to a stranger, yep, there's 45.6 billion won up for grabs, we're both probably gonna die. Here's my marbles, bro. Finally, gi -hoon gets the final marble from the old man, and surprise, the old man dies too. <laughs> Ooh. 
That's episode six. Hope you enjoyed. Surprise, this woman is still alive. And this guy wants to leave when 97% of the competition is already dead. Oh, it's uh, such a beautiful number, 69. <laughs> you know, part of me would have instinctively said nice since I've been on the internet for almost two decades, but the acting is so bad, you got silence from me when I saw this for the first time. It's not even a so bad it's good thing, you know? We are introduced to game number five. Before it begins, the players must choose a numbered vest between 1 and 16, with the numbers being the order you play in. Gihun gets number 16 because he's the main character, and we're off. Again. Player 2, defeated! I like how he just pushes him off to the side. He didn't even like try and like, you know, shove him around and try and hit the glass. No, he just wastes the whole person. Idiot. That was when I ruled the land. Sangwoo shows his true self once again. <laughs> Same. Defeated. I'm just realizing this now. Imagine if you like pushed the guy and like the glass didn't break. Like that would just been so stupid. <laughs> now here's something that's so astronomically dumb. Why would you injure your finalists? What what is the purpose? Why? Oh, and it turns out the policeman escapes. <laughs> Episode 8 is really short, so let me just lightning fast through it. The final three get a tuxedo as a reward for killing off 552 other people. Sabiok is fatally wounded. I hate everything. Not even joking, I genuinely wanted her to win over the other two, so. This was... rough. They are entitled to a nice steak dinner. The policeman dies, lol. And then Sabiok dies. As she's lowered into the casket, Gihun screams. I wouldn't blame him.
마지막 게임에 오신 것을 환영합니다. 게임에 앞서 공수를 가리는 동전 던지기를 하겠습니다. Time to take a piece. 난 절대 역사 가지고 못 나가. 참가자 과반수가 동의하면 게임은 중단됐다. No. 물론 알아요. 아저씨, 누나 친구야. 그럼 문 누나 어디 있는지 알아요? This scene genuinely made me shed a tear. I'm not really sure why though. Gi Hun sees the very same businessman who invited him to play the Squid Game. He's doing the same game he played with him. Gi Hun, furious by this, immediately runs over to the other side of the track. <laughs> 기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기훈기
자네 돈이 하나도 없는 사람과 돈이 너무 많은 사람의 공통점이 뭔줄 아나? 사는 게 재미가 없다는 거야. <웃음>